Hey guys, I'm Dimension Jump, and today I'll be doing my top 5 uh, upcoming games that I'm excited for. Now, uh, with within the last few years, we have seen um, some announcements for upcoming games, and we have seen, you know, some trailers, some um, story ones, some game ones, and yeah, and in, in today's video, I'll just be going over some of the upcoming games that I'm kind of excited for. So for number 5 is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now I've played a bit of the first two games, Xenoblade 1 and 2. Um, and even though I'm not, uh, haven't got that far into either games, I'm, I was, I was still enjoyed those playing them. And with the announcement of Xenoblade 3, I am kind of excited for this because then that means I can probably try and go back to the um, games, um, the other, the first two games to try and get through, um, those two and try and have an understanding of the whole world for those two games, but, yeah, Zen from, 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 from what I've seen, um, from the trailers, Xenoblade 3 looks cool, it, look, it looks really interesting, I, th I think it looks, it looks like really cool, I, th I think, you know, graphically it looks, I think, a lot like the second game. Um, and even though the first Tizdino Blade game was, you know, had those, those kinds of graphics in, um, the Tizdino uh, Blade 2 and 3 kind of have uh, expanded on them and stuff like that, so, yeah, and the gameplay looks, it looks cool, because, um, there was a trailer recently that shows, um, some of the characters kind of merging together to become these, um, robot mechs. Um, and yeah, that seems interesting, and it looks really cool to um, play off in um, combat and stuff like that, so it, it, it seems interesting. For number four is Bayonetta 3. Now, I've played through Bayonetta 1, no, 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 1, Bayonetta 2, and it's fun, it's kind of like that sort of Devil May Cry sort of thing, where, um, you got, you know, your main character, Bayonetta, and she does a bunch of combos to enemies and stuff like that. And with Bayonetta 3 recently being announced, it, or what we've seen from the trailers and stuff, it look, uh, th the gameplay looks quite interesting, and I do like how we can fight off against these giant uh, blob monster things. And yeah, from, and from what I've seen, but under three, it's going to be I would say it's going to be a lot cooler and more flashier than um, the first, the second game in terms of combat I would say and probably how much combos and stuff you can do um, to enemies. For number three is Splatoon three. Now this is the final you know game that has three on the end. So <laughs> um, yeah, and with Splatoon three it looks interesting because it's got that sort of post-apocalyptic world to it and even though it's going to be you know somewhat similar to Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, um, the, from what I've seen the game looks fun because um, you know you've got like you know that sort of post-apocalyptic world and uh, hopefully the, the online mode is going to be somewhat interesting because like I would say if you look at between one and two, it's pretty much the same thing, except the the second game has the number two. Um, by and I would say if I would say if the if for the main story, I would say from what I'm gathering, I would say you have to try and rebuild um, the world or try and rebuild a certain area of the world, maybe and try and um, put it back to its former glory. I would say um, every time you defeat a boss or something like that, um, you would get more and more um, stuff to rebuild the world and stuff like that. And if that is the case, then that'll be quite interesting. I'm not 100% sure yet, but it looks interesting and it looks fun. And it's just you know more Splatoon and more hitting your opponents with ink from some ink guns and rolling pins and stuff like that. It's just fun. For number two is God of War Ragnarok. Now I now with I've played the 2018 game and that was a whole lot of fun because I enjoyed 
I enjoyed the whole game from start to finish, and I and so after um walk or walk through play through thing, um I just enjoyed going through you know fighting enemies, beating the Valkyries, and stuff like that. And with the second game, it looks really interesting because you know it's all based on Norse mythology this time instead of the Greek pantheon, and this, and this is really hev heavily leaning into the whole. Ragnarok story, and I think from what we've seen from like you know the frozen like the new realm, they look quite in quite interesting because that that means we'll probably have a new way of traversing realms instead of just using the the travel gate from like in the last game. So that would be kind of interesting. Maybe in, in terms of how we get from one realm to the next, maybe there's like there's like a secret area we could go to or a new chamber of the realm stuff so we can travel between the realms maybe and I really do hope that we fight um, or potentially see Odin because in the 2018 game we have seen or have heard stories of Odin um, whenever, we, whenever we go on a boat ride and Mimir talks about Odin from time to time and in this game I do hope we get to see him fully or see a glimpse of him and then if there's a third game we can then fully fight Thor, and we we get to see get to see the, um, see him fully, and see what he looks like, and then we get to fight him and stuff like that. And yeah, I, th I would say God of War Ragnarok is a interesting game, and it looks very cool to see and potentially play. And for number one is The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild Two. Now this game was re was announced back in twenty nineteen. I would say I, I, I was around twenty nineteen, and Recently, there has been an, um, an announcement from AG and Emma saying that it has been delayed to spring of next year, which I don't mind about. And from from the trailers and that we've seen and the new um, ten seconds of footage that we've seen, the game looks interesting. It looks really fun because it's going that sort of matures mask um, route of the story being this kind of dark, darker storyline. Where if you look at some of the other games like um, The Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, Spirit Tracks, those kinds of games, they were kind of more light in their story in terms of like, oh, it's just happy go lucky um, a teenager, and then they go on an adventure and beat them, be the boss and stuff like that. And with um, with the World Two, it looks like it's going to be a lot more darker in story and a lot more. Just okay. This is this is a different kind of Zelda game. This is a Zelda game that um, doesn't have, even though it's going to have a lot of similar stuff to previous games, even for the World One. This is going to have a completely different, a completely different tone in terms of the story and stuff like that. So, yeah, with Breath of the Wild Two, it looks like it's going to be a whole lot cooler than the first game because the first game it was fun. It was interesting too go around Hyrule, but now with the added um, areas like the underground and the Sky Islands, I would say that Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be a fun, interesting game to play. So that's been my top 5 upcoming games that I'm, that I'm excited for. I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.